everyone, welcome to Teen Paint Night. I am Olivia from the Strathmore Library and I am so excited to be doing this program. I, um, even though it's virtual, which is not exactly my preference or maybe yours, I'm still really looking forward to this class and I hope you enjoy it too. We have four weeks to do four different classes and in each class I will be doing, I think most of them have two projects, maybe one of them just has one. But I'm going to try to show you a whole bunch of different watercolor techniques and styles. So hopefully one of them fits your style and you can continue and develop your watercolor skills. I have been painting for a few years and I really enjoy it as a hobby. I want to let everyone know I am not a professional painter or an artist, professional artist. I just do it for fun and I hope you guys can have fun too. This class is going to be, I hope, very relaxed, loose, fun. You change projects to your preference. You can pick color palettes and I hope everybody really enjoys it and has fun. We can go ahead and look at our kits if you want to. I um, don't have a kit for myself, but I will show you what you have. So in your kit, you will have paint palette Mine is a little um, used up because I've been practicing a lot with um, the projects I'm hoping to do with you guys, but yours will be a bit more full. You don't need a ton of paint and watercolor. That's the great thing about it. It's a really um, affordable way to do art. So the paint you see here is dried pigment. You will have to mix water in with it and the top layer of paint to get the paint we will use to paint. Too. Paint. I said so many times. You will mix water in with the paint to um, loosen it and get the pigment up so you can paint it onto the paper and you will still have plenty left. This is doesn't look like a lot but it's more than enough for the four-ish projects that we will be doing. So you have your palette and paint. You can use the mixing, middle as a mixing area. You might need oh, just like a regular dinner plate would work for mixing as well. So whatever. Oh, I got a little paint on my, oh no, my picture. Okay, so you have that. You'll have a paintbrush. This one will exactly be the same. I did, didn't did buy one for myself with the kits, but this is my home paintbrush and yeah, watercolor paintbrushes. You may notice that it's a little bit softer than paintbrushes that you might use at say school art class or something. Watercolor paintbrushes have to absorb a lot of water and pigment and they have to be soft enough to spread it loosely. An oil brush used for like oil or acrylics or something can be a little bit stiffer, but watercolor brushes are very soft. And you'll also have four pieces of paper and one half piece of paper and two reference photos. So you'll have the dog picture, we'll be doing that one later, and you'll have the, um, ugh, this one, the Mandela. So we will be doing this, both of those, a different day. So right now we are going to start by swatching out all of the 10 colors so we can see what colors we have to work with. And we'll be using the half sheet for that. So go ahead and grab your half sheet, grab a cup of water and your paints and your paintbrush. And then we'll get started. So first things first, before we start painting, we are going to swatch out our colors so we know what we're working with. So we are going to start with the yellow. We're not going to do white because we white is pretty much white, but we'll start with the yellow. So first I'm going to write the color here, yellow. And then you take your brush. When you first get your brush, it will have this clear protective case on it. This is just to keep it um, from getting all ruined in the mail. So you can take that off and throw this away. And you'll notice that your brush bristles are really stiff. They have some kind of a coating on them to keep them looking fresh in the packaging. I think it's like a gelatin or something. So, but you can take your brush and just get a cup of water and dunk it and clean it off and brush it around. I am, I don't have to do that because I'm going to be using my own brush instead. So once your brush is ready, you can get it, dip it in some clean water 
And next to the yellow, we are just going to do just plain water to start and paint a rectangle kind of shape with just plain water. What we are going to do in this long skinny rectangle is show what this yellow it can do. We want to see what it looks like at its darkest and what it looks like at its lightest. So now you'll get some clean water on your brush and put it onto the yellow paint. I just poured these um, palettes today, so mine is going to be going to be a little bit um, wet still. But you might have to brush your paint around a little bit with some water to act kind of activate the colors. I don't have to do that because mine is still pretty wet, honestly. It's just a little bit dry on the top. But so I'm going to take a good amount of paint and look for where the light, where my water is. And I'm just going to put it at the one side of my rectangle. And then as you can see, the pigment, and you can even add a little bit more water in there if you want, the pigment will carry along the patch that you painted. You might have to help it along a little bit. But so then you can see what your yellow looks like as it fades out. If, if it doesn't really want to come, you might have to get some clean water on your brush and just kind of come at it from the opposite end. Then you can see, so with more water, your yellow will look like this. And with less water, it will look more like this. So out of the yellow, you have a dark yellow and a light yellow. So now we're going to do the red. This red is called Scarlet, so I'm just gonna write that. You don't even have to necessarily label them if you don't want to, it's up to you. So now I'm going to paint Tangle again. Nice amount of water and get some paint on my brush. Make sure in between each color you're obviously um, cleaning off your brush with some nice clean water. And actually, this is reminding me, um, before we, I don't really have to do this because my paints are still pretty moist. But before we um, continue using all these paints, you can use the little pipette I gave you with the little dropper. Suck up some clean water and put a drop of water in each um, paint well. That will kind of help the paint rehydrate. There's our blue.
wash off my brush and then maybe do the rectangle now. Hey, that worked pretty good actually. Let's get it to spread out so we can see what it looks like lighter. So sometimes, like with these two blues, um, if you're doing a painting and you know you want a blue, like in a sky, say, so this will help. You can look at the swatches and see, do you want this darker blue or the lighter blue? And then you can see also see what they look like when they're faded out a little bit. So you can really pick the color that you specifically want. Next we're going to do the yellow green. Remember to do my rectangle this time. Next we have the umber. brown, which is called burnt sienna. And finally, we have the Payne's Gray, which looks like the black. There we go. So now we can see all the colors that we have in our palette. See what we have to work with. And if there's something that we don't exactly have that we need, we can mix it. So for example, we I'm noticing here we don't have an orange or a purple. So let's try and mix an orange and a purple. So we might have to try a few different combinations and see what exactly looks good because as you can see we have two different types of blue for purple so one of them might look better to us than the other and well I guess for the orange we pretty much have we only have one yellow and one red so let's start with orange so to mix orange you pr 
probably already know this, but we need to mix in our, we'll do it, I'm gonna do it in the middle here. We'll try and keep it in the one half so we can do purple in one half and orange in the other half. So I'm going to do mostly yellow. And just a touch of red. So that looks pretty red, but that's okay. So I do have a little bit of it left, but now we know what it looks like with our yellow and our red. Makes that orange. Now I'm going to try and do the purple with the red and blue. So we will do some blue. And as you can see, um, I didn't supply you with a ton of paint, but we do have, the watercolor goes really far, so you don't need a ton of watercolor to paint. I'm not sure how I like that. Oh, okay, maybe it's all right. Let's get a little bit of that blue out of there. So let's see what this turns out to be. Hey, that's not too bad for purple. Some paints you get do come with a purple, but this is a pretty basic set, so it didn't come with a purple. There, so now we have two new colors that we mixed, and you can try any amount of mixing that you want to try. There's lots of space left in the paper there, so go ahead if you want to try the light blue with red to see what kind of purple that makes. Let's actually, let's just do that right now. I'll take the, some red. Oops goopy. I'll add a bit of water to that. It's kind of goopy. And let's try with the cerulean blue. See what kind of purple that makes. That's pretty blue. Red. So it's definitely a different purple. I kind of prefer the first one that we did, but whatever works for the painting that you're doing. Okay, so now we have our swatches and we'll move on to our first project. Okay, for our first real project, we are going to be painting a beach scene. I have mine here. This is the one I painted earlier today. So we're going to do like a bird's eye view kind of with sand and water. I cut my page to about um, just slightly less than half of a page just so I can fit it on the video, but you feel free to do a full page, half page, cut it to the size of a frame you want, whatever you want. The extra page, the extra paper you could use for another project or testing out or scrap paper, make a bookmark, whatever you want. So right now I'm getting my masking tape and I'm going to tape around the edges of my paper to keep it flat when we start painting. Watercolor paper, unless you get the really expensive like artist grade watercolor paper, sometimes will buckle if you use too much water and then it will like kind of buckle up with the water and then the water cup, the paint up here will drip over to the edges and that's not good. So we want to tape it down so we can have a nice flat piece of paper. I use masking tape for this because it usually peels off pretty good without ripping the paper, but you could also use um, scotch tape or whatever you want, or you can try your best without any tape. I often just paint without any tape if I'm just practicing or whatever, and it's usually okay. 
So I'm taping all four sides just to maybe, I don't know, not very much overlap, but just enough to keep it flat. Okay, now I earlier, just before I started, I put a drop of water on each of my paint um, pods here just to rehydrate and start getting going. I am going to start with the sand and I'm going to use this ochre color here and maybe a little brown, maybe a little yellow, a little white, but mostly I'm going to start with this. So when we get started with watercolor paint, we will have to get our brush wet. But we don't want to have a dripping brush, like that's too much water. So what I usually do is get it all wet, wash off all the paint from the last color you used, and then just kind of rub it on the side. So your brush is damp, but not dripping. I'm gonna start with the ochre, like I said, and when you're watercolor painting, it's not the same as acrylic or oil painting where you can take the white and paint on top of things if you want it to be lighter. That's not gonna work with watercolor. In watercolor, like for this one, I don't specifically have a white um, part of the picture I wanna paint, but if there's something that's white, say you're painting a panda and there's a lot of white, that white comes from the paper. It doesn't come from the white paint. So you have to be starting with the lightest color and work your way to the darkest and keep that white white. For this one, you will need some plastic wrap or an old plastic bag or something. So go ahead and pause if you need to and go grab that. <clears throat> so with the paintbrush slightly damp, with excess water taken off, we are going to grab some of the, oops, that's, this is way too much. Like you'll learn, um, it just takes some practice, but you do not want thick paint on your brush. You want to mix water with the paint and get the lightly tinted water. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and we're gonna start with the sand. If it's too dry, like that is definitely too dry, get some extra water and <clears throat> mix it out a little bit. So you can do your sand as um, far up the page as you want. And we also want a little bit of I don't know what's going on there. Um, is any of your guys' paper doing that? Let's add a little bit more water. It's kind of like almost repelling the paint, which is weird. I usually do my um, painting on the rougher side of the paper. Like as you can see, there's a rougher and a smoother side and I like to do the rougher side. But I messed up on that side, so I flipped it over and now it's kind of acting weird, but I'm just going to pretend that isn't happening. Maybe when I um, finish up the painting, I will cut that area off because I don't like that. Oh, that helped actually. <laughs> kind of weird. Okay, smoothing it out with my thumb work helped, but I'm gonna take my rag and soak up the excess because I don't want all that excess on there. Okay, so there's our sand. If you wanna add a little bit of darker, Sorry, my camera view is kind of weird. If you want to add a little bit of brown in there to mix things up, you can. We will be putting some details in the sand later, like um, some little shells or rocks or whatever you want. So I'm good with that for my sand for now. And we're, now we're gonna start with the water, which is the fun part. 
So as you go deeper out, <clears throat> the water will be darker because it's deeper. So I'm gonna start with the darker blue at the back and even maybe mix a little bit of the gray in with it at the very back. Oh, look at that. I like that color. But you choose a color of blue that you like. Just start with deeper and then we will get lighter as we go forward towards the sand. So I got some nice dark blue in there. Maybe I'll just do the plain darker blue next. Maybe a little of the dark green in there. So we're just doing kind of stripes of all the different bluey, greeny colors with. See how they kind of bleed into each other? That's okay. And you don't want too much water, but you want enough that it covers the paper. some different colors of blues mixed in there and greens some of the lighter green in there so every time you switch colors this one this project you don't really doesn't really matter because all the colors are going to be mixing together anyway but you'll want to wash your brush off and dry it off in between colors so blue in the top here, it's kind of dark. Um, let's see how that works. So now here, so there's the water and here comes the fun part. What we are going to do is take your plastic wrap. Now, the smoother it is, the less texture it will give. So I'm going to try and fold it over a little bit. So that, there's some wrinkles and bumps. Lay it over top of the water and kind of tap it down. So this plastic will kind of make, and then you can peel it off, and it kind of makes cool wave looking things. So if you just lay it down like we did that time, it makes bigger splotches. If you scrunch it up into a ball, which is what I'm gonna do along the water's edge here, it can make, kind of looks like sea foam on the beach. And this, at this point, we are going to stop and let it dry. If you want to, you can um, put a little more color in here. Like, for example, look right here. It's extremely plain. Like, there's no wrinkles or bumps or anything. You can either do more saran wrap or you can do a wet and wet technique, which is this paint is still wet. You can get your brush damp, put it in some more paint, and drop it in there. And then as you see, it will start to spread out. The water paint that you have mixes and spreads out into the paint here. So it's called wet and wet because wet paint plus wet brush makes, um, it all bleed together and it looks kind of pretty. If you don't want to do that, then you can just leave it and let it dry. So I am happy with mine now, I think. Maybe I'll put a little bit more in here. That looks kind of neat. So you will want some lighter spots, some darker spots, just some a whole bunch of different colors of blue and green mixed together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. I'm liking that. And we will come back to do some more details and once it's dry. So maybe give it maybe half an hour and then check back and we'll go from there. Okay, I am back with my ocean painting. It is completely dry. Even the spots that were a bit wetter at the beginning are dry. This is also a good opportunity to pause the video and go get some fresh, clean water. You wanna be working with as clean of water as possible, especially if you're using different colors that mix together to make like a mucky gray color. So right now, 
I have my dried ocean, my dry sand, and I'm going to do a little bit of maybe some sea animals or something like I did in my other one. And at the very end, we're gonna do some splatter, which is really fun. I'm going to start out by doing a little crab and a starfish like I did in my previous one. Um, but you can do whatever animal you want. You could do some shells, rocks, I don't know, whatever you want. My, um, my own style is kind of loose but I want you to paint something that you enjoy. So for the crab, I'm gonna grab some red and we're gonna use a really light touch because crabs are small and sometimes with watercolor, especially if you only have the one brush, it is hard to um, get really tiny details, but we're gonna do our best. So I'm gonna do his body kind of like a like an oval but kind of pointed at the back and rounded out so he's off kind of off looking at an angle you'll see give him two little bumps where his eyes are Oops, it's getting bigger oh let's fix that sorry okay now I'm gonna give him two little bumps where his eyes are because that kind of made my crab bigger than I wanted him to be but that's okay there's his eyes We'll give him claws. Oh, sorry, you can't see in the video. I'm still learning the uh, ins and outs of video recording. It is handy that you can see what I'm working on, because if in, we were in person, it might be a bit trickier, so. Because it's hard to put watercolor on an easel because it will all just drip to the bottom. That looks kind of cute and I'm gonna give him some back legs however oops. since our brush is a little bit bigger than I would have preferred for those fine details like that I am going to use a skewer so if you have a skewer or a toothpick or a pencil or I don't know anything that's pointy all you can do is there's quite a decent amount of paint on there just drag it out a little bit so put your skewer in and drag. And that looks kind of cute. I will maybe go give him some black eyes or some, some details with a really tiny, you could still use the skewer and dip it in the black paint, or you could use a marker or leave it, whatever you want. Now I'm gonna do, clean my brush off and do a starfish. I'm gonna do like a purple kind of starfish. So mix the blue and red together you're mixing or on a plate. I um, have a ceramic, white ceramic plate that I use a lot for mixing, but anything will do. And the nice thing about um, having a dedicated plate you use is that you can put some plastic wrap or something over it and then store it. And next time you want to paint, you can just add water and you can use the same colors you mixed. So here goes my starfish. <laughs> That's kind of cute. So you can do like a shell if you want, or I don't know, whatever you want to driftwood, make it your own. Now I'm gonna do some splatter. So what I wanna do is I'm hoping this, I haven't tested this out yet, so we'll see. I'm hoping the white will splatter and not become transparent, but we're gonna test it out. So I'm gonna get a whole bunch of water, load it up into my white. Uh, I'm trying to make it so you can see without. Okay, load it up, get lots of really liquidy white and saturate your brush. Then you can either tap it against the table or your like hold your finger out and tap it against there and splatter the white. So it kind of looks like sea foam or you know. The splatter kind of gives it a playful. It's playful, it's fun, it shows movement like the waves moving in and moving out. 
And I think I'm gonna do some light blue splatter. So you can do the same thing with your blue. Light blue, get lots of water mixed in. Get your brush nice and full of blue. And I think maybe I'll just tap it on the... The more... There we go, oh, it looks kind of fun. Beachy, like the waves coming in and out. Even a little green splatter might be cute. Just do a tiny bit of the light green. There. I'm happy with that. I think it looks cool. Kind of beachy. Kind of, ref you know, summery. And feel free to add, like I said, any details. And I would love it if you could share a picture with me. I'll show the email address down below or you could post it to our Facebook.